Hi, my name is Steve and welcome to the Seaside Allotment channel and today I just want a quick intro to a video on early potatoes. Now I actually really like growing early potatoes even though I don't like eating potatoes. I just really like the challenge of it and the fun of it. Um, and I think really now about the middle of January is about the earliest time that it's practical to uh, to grow early potatoes. You, obviously you can sow them at any time, I mean you could sow them in December if you wanted to, but really they're just going to grow as very spindly little plants really, not very healthy, and you're kind of consuming life. Um, the thing is, you know, potatoes have a, a specific lifespan, so 90 days, 120 days, something like that, and if you're using some of those days in sort of December and early January, then you're kind of burning up life when the potatoes not really growing very strongly uh, and is not you know it's not a very productive time for it from the middle of january of course light levels are starting to increase again um, and if you can sort of play some tricks like growing in a conservatory or a polytunnel or a greenhouse or something like that then um, yeah you can get a worthwhile crop and so we do that but we don't grow huge now we do about two pots uh, every two weeks, that's a pot, a pot a week, but uh, the growing area that we've got takes two pots. Um, and so I'll show you what we do. So when I was working in this little room here, uh, you served as my home office and it works really nicely as a, a gardener's den now. I've got the uh, seeds starting up there on the shelf. Uh, I've got another windowsill here with a fan that's so I can blow the uh, <coughs> blow a bit of air over the seeds to make them a bit stockier and hardier. And under the desk, I start things like carrots and potatoes, uh, nice and early. And then I've got another spot here, which is nice and sunny. And this is where I do things like uh, overwintered peppers. Um, the next batch of potatoes so once the potatoes have um, started under the desk and they have breached the surface and they need some more light then I'll give them another couple of weeks in here before I move them to the polytunnel and up here that's where I have all my seeds not ideal for seeds really but they uh, they seem to survive okay so I was going to do my earliest potatoes as charlottes I really like charlottes early in the season um, the plants just seem to be so healthy, they don't seem to bother at all with the cold, uh, as long as they don't freeze. But I was on holiday last week and I got these Swift uh, one pound Wilco's ones and they're actually starting to sprout quite nicely. So I thought, well, I'll try Swift. Normally I do Swift in February uh, and Charlotte in January, but I thought, well, let's just uh, swap them around and see how it goes. And I also got these... Aaron Pilot, £2.50 for two kilos. And again, they're starting to sprout as well. So I thought, well, I'll do half Aaron Pilot and I'll do half of Swift. Um, and I'll compare those to last year's experience of doing Charlotte's. And generally, what I do is I do two of these containers every two weeks, basically, um, for the next couple of months. Uh, until it's warm enough to start things outside um, and I normally get a nice little crop I'll just put some pictures up of uh, of the harvest that I get and yeah I've always been pretty pleased with that I mean the only downside to starting them like this is that obviously you need you do need somewhere warmish to start them um, and obviously I've got that and I've got another spot in the corner there and that's where I'm going to do uh, tomatoes, or one, just one tomato plant. Um, but really there's no downside, because um, I've got the space. They don't get in the way at all. I actually really like watching them grow. Um, and the, the only downside is they just take up a little bit of polytunnel space. But early in the season, I'm, you know, I've got a little bit of extra space in the polytunnel, so I don't mind that. I've also got one more spot which is where the books are at the moment. And that's where I'm gonna do early cucumbers and they're gonna trail down. And uh, I did that for late cucumbers and it worked really nicely. I had quite a few uh, cucumbers in 
November, which is nice. And yeah, so I'm pretty pleased uh, with that. I've just moved the overwintering um, peppers into the kitchen, on the windowsill in the kitchen, uh, because they were in the conservatory, but obviously because I'm starting the potatoes, I've moved them. Um, and still got, I mean, we've had loads and loads of peppers off them. Um, and and they're growing really nicely, and, and I think they look really pretty on the windsill there. I think they're uh, just as nice as house plants. So, uh, yeah, let's get on with those potatoes. So I'm starting them in these small containers. They really are quite small. I normally um, would have a container maybe one and a half to two times the size, but I've got to move these around a lot. So I'm moving them around the house, then I'm taking them in the car to the allotment, and then I'm moving them around the polytunnel. Uh, as I need space and so I just don't want to be lifting containers that are really big all the time um, so small containers it is for the early starts I'm using this evergreen Irish multi-purpose that's just uh, the compost that was nearest the door at the garden centre basically and I was sent this I don't know for free a couple of years ago I think um, so this is just a non-organic potato fertilizer I wouldn't use it really normally but uh, I've got it so I don't want to throw it away these are my saved charlottes and so I'll get those chitins soon and given the small size of the containers I'm only going to put two spuds in each and I think I've got about four inches of uh, composting and I always fill my containers right to the top I don't bother with earthing up they grow through that uh, thickness of compost really quickly and obviously there's not many tips you can give about planting potatoes but the only thing I do is I, I do make sure I push the compost down at the sides because what I find is the water often just runs down the sides when you water them um, but if you do that then the compost doesn't sort of shrink away from the sides so much um, and it makes all the difference when you're watering and uh, that it keeps the water actually in the pot so that's my tip so I do most of my uh, potatoes in containers you can see them all stacked up there ready to go um, and do them normally in these 35 litre ones I do my carrots in these containers and these are pretty good and these are also easy to move around. I start these just the same way in the polyton in the polyton in the uh, conservatory and the only difference is that I I always leave these in the light because I find that as soon as they come up they can get really leggy really quickly. So um yeah, so I don't put those under. I don't put these under the desk. Um, I just put them in that uh, that area where there's good light. And yeah, it, it's, it's great because they germinate so quickly. They only take about seven days, and once they've germinated, they can just go down to the allotment uh, and go in the polytunnel because they're you know they're not tender. Um, we don't need fleece in or anything like that. They're, they're fine in the polytunnel, uh, and of course they just think it's spring. I do quite a few carrots in containers. Um, I particularly like doing it for the winter ones because if we get any really bad weather, I can just lift these containers up and just move them into the shed uh, so that we can con continue harvesting them because the ground will be frozen. These are the only carrots that we've got left in the ground now. And they're fine at the moment, but uh, as soon as it freezes, it gets to be a bit of a pain. So that's the potatoes in there well close to their resting places I just need watering now and I'll water them with warm water quite warm water just to get them going and then they won't need any more water basically until they breach the surface now lots of people comment about how organized I am and I'm not really that organized I just use this database to keep me organized and occasionally really on uh, rainy cold days in winter I have a little bit of motivation to set up this database and then for the rest of the year basically it just keeps me on track and I need to be 
I need something to organise me because we're growing about 219 different things this year. So quite a lot of things to keep on top of. So I've just changed my plans. I'm always changing my plans. So look at my sewing log. I'm meant to be sewing Charlotte's, well, not today, but in a couple of days' time. Um, but I haven't done that. I've sewn Aaron Pilot and Swift. So I need to fix that in my database. So the first thing I need to do is just remove Charlotte and add Aaron Pilot and change the date to today so I can keep track of how long things actually take. Mark it as done under the desk in the conservatory. So that's that done. And then I need to take a copy of that. So I'll just duplicate that and change that one to Swift. I grow two things called Swift. So I've got Swift corn and Swift potato. And so that's done. So that was really easy, wasn't it? And then when I do my first harvest, and it'll be interesting to see whether it's the Aaron Pilot or the Swift, I'll be able to update my uh, first harvest dates database and compare what I did last year with what I did this year. Charlotte's harvested my first ones on the 11th of April. And I planted those, scroll down there, sown here. 14th of January so basically sowing about the same time Swift's a bit faster than Charlotte I think probably Aaron Pilot is also a bit faster than Charlotte so conceivably depending on the weather we might get a harvest before the 11th of April which would be nice because the we, we are going to run out in about 10 weeks time of new potatoes that we've got still stored in containers in the compost that they grew in um, still very nice condition but we'll have run out we'll be you know it'll be uh, about a month we'll have run out so hopefully we'll have ordinary potatoes but for new potatoes anyway it's nice to have them all year round we haven't quite managed to do that and let's just take a look at what I've still got to sow well I've still got to do French breakfast radish and some peppers so I need to get my propagator out lots more radish and I'm actually changing the date for these carrots because I was going to do them on the 10th of January I've got nowhere to germinate them now um, these potatoes will probably take about two weeks so I'm going to move that to the 24th which is no big deal because um, the uh, I've got loads of carrots in the polytunnel already so that doesn't really matter so you can see I love changing plans and it just makes it really easy to keep track of everything. So the only thing I need to do now is I need to pr do my labels. Um, so I, what I do is I take this number here, 57 and 58, and these are the ID numbers for these uh, batches of potatoes. And I write those on my labels and it makes it easy to keep track. So this is how I do my labels. I just use a Sharpie and write on these which are milk cartons uh, just cut up and I use a lot of labels so basically by using milk cartons I have a pretty much infinite supply because I get eight, no I get more than that probably 12 labels per carton of milk and I get through one of those every three days so I don't say that much. Um, yeah, I put the ID on, and so all I need to do to find out all the details of what I've sewn is just look that ID up on my phone, and I've got all the info I need. And just for completeness, this is my setup for when I'm doing uh, videos on the computer. Really convenient, and this is pretty much the only time uh, that I use this computer now. I used to sit here working away for over a decade in this office and uh, now it's about an hour a month <laughs> quite a big change so hope you like that quick video and if you give it a try 
make sure you've got a polytunnel or a greenhouse or better yet a conservatory and keep that fleece handy. See you soon. Mm -hmm.